Hello, I'm Terry Marr. The Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. We're going to continue to talk about the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost on today's episode of His Alone. The Bible says in Psalm 65 and 4, one of my favorite scriptures, it says, Blessed is the man whom God chooses and causes to approach unto him. Let me say that again. Blessed is the man or woman whom God chooses and causes to approach unto him. I want to get that into our spirits as we start today's session. We're going to continue to talk about the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. We've talked about who the Holy Spirit is and how the Father sent him and how he does not speak of himself, how he speaks when he hears the Father say unto us and how he's a teacher and a comforter and a guide unto us. And when you look at the scripture I just, I just uh, mentioned, blessed are those who God chooses. We are chosen by God from the foundation of the earth. And the Holy Spirit is here on the earth to help us as we make choices based on what God has already said about us. Blessed is the man or woman, mankind, whom God chooses. Then it says, he causes to approach unto him. In order for us to understand the need of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we have to understand that there comes a time in all of our lives when the Holy Spirit will reveal himself. He's ready to reveal himself to us. He's ready to show himself. Why would he do that? He's ready to allow us to see who God sees us as being on this earth and in the body of Christ. We've been talking about assignments. I have an assignment. You have an assignment. One assignment is not greater than the other. We are all under the same umbrella. We're all in the body of Christ. Jesus is our head. God is our Father, and we are brothers and sisters in the body. The Holy Spirit's job is to take each one of us, individually and collectively, and allow us to become who God says we are, utilize the gifts that the Holy Spirit has declared we are to have as we go on our journey, and make sure that all things that have been purposed from the foundation of the earth for us to do are done and done in excellence in wisdom and in understanding according to God's idea for us. I'm excited about what we're going to talk about today because I have this strong impression and sense in the spirit realm that there are people who have been waiting for years behind the curtain, knowing that there is more to what God wants them to do than they've actually accomplished. They felt and sensed destiny all of their lives, but now there seems like there's a pulling and a drawing that they've never had before. And because of that, I am believing that with these sessions, of His alone, not only with me, but with all the, the preachers of the earth at this time, in this generation, here and now, the Holy Spirit is using us to awaken all of those people who've been waiting behind that curtain so they can know now it's time. Time to step out in faith. Time to step out knowing that what God has said 
shall come to pass and excellent and enjoy. Let's look at the scripture one more time. Psalms 65 and 4, King James Version. Blessed are the, is the man whom God chooses. Blessed means happy, content. We are content and we are blessed and we're happy because we've been chosen by God. But the scripture also says in the Bible, many are called, but few are chosen. When we talk about the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, many people think of the gifts of the Spirit, and there are, there are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And these gifts are gifts of power and gifts of presence. And because these gifts are talked about so often, we see how um, the Holy Spirit through the gifts are able is able to let us speak to the people in the congregation or the people of the world or the people of the nations. We're able to speak what God has given us to speak. We're able to uh, perform miracles. We're able to um, uh, give them words of wisdom, words of knowledge. We're able to discern spirits, angelic spirits, demonic spirits. All these things can happen through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. But though there are gifts of power and gifts of presence and gifts of things that are said and gifts of things that are done, miraculous things, it's not the gift that we want to really discuss today. We want to discuss the person who gives us that gift through the Holy Spirit. If it were just the gift then it would say that many are called and many receive. But it says many are called, but few are chosen. We're chosen based not so much on the call, but based on the fact after we're called, are we going forth because of the gift we want? Are we going forth because of the giver of the gift? What I want us to see in the session we have today, God wants us to know that our character, the character that needs to be like Him, needs to be more important to us than the fact that people can see that we have the gift of word of knowledge or the gift of a word of wisdom or discerning of spirits. Our character the integrity that we have, the motive behind us coming to God to receive the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit has to be one that we want to get close to God, not that we can be famous because we can be anointed with the gift. I can't stress that enough. Many of us are behind the curtain because God is purifying our motives. wonder how I know that. It's because I have had to struggle with that for years. When you begin to see things that God can do in you, it gets you to the point that you sometimes concentrate more on what it is you see than on the one who's actually performing the gift through you. It's easier said than done. Anyone can say, oh, I won't get a big head if I can do this or the Holy Spirit uses me to do that. Those are just words. When you actually get there and you hear people, who, and you have a stadium full of people who will come simply because they heard that you were able to lay hands on someone and they're thinking it's you and you're allowing them to let them think it's you. When in actuality, you have nothing to do with it. You're just the vessel. God wants us to be, have so much integrity that no matter what man says about us, we recognize that it's God who is the giver of all gifts. It is His Holy Spirit, His idea to allow the Holy Spirit to come on the earth and to utilize us to do the work of the Father in the earth. Many are called, few are chosen. Who's chosen? the ones who say yes to being able to pay the price 
for the anointing. So as we go forth and continue to talk about the presence and the power and the nature of the Holy Spirit, we can't get but so far until we understand the importance of allowing the character of God to shine through above every gift, above every calling. Whether you're in the five-fold ministry, whether you're a preacher, an evangelist, a teacher, whether you're a bishop, no matter what the label is that man may put on you, it is the fruit of the Spirit that needs to shine forth through each and every one of us in order for us to be recognizable as the sons of God. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when God shall appear, we shall be like Him. Why? Because we're recognizable. We can be recognized. The Holy Spirit is here to help us become ready to receive the power and the presence that is available to us, but not before he'll, we yield ourselves on the potter's wheel so that all of these things inside of us that are not of God can be transformed by the renewing and the power of our Father God. God has a plan for us. There are things that we will do but before we can go any further in knowing what it is we will do, let's yield ourselves as the Holy Spirit speaks to us, takes out those things that need to be taken out, replaces them with things that are of God. There is so much for us to do. And we can do this because it's been declared from the foundation of the earth. As a Christian, you may be aware of the journey of life you must navigate through day by day. But as a son of God, are you aware of the Father who has ordered each step, making it specific to your needs and his expectations for your growth and success along the way? Through Terry Marr's new book, Searching the Depths of God, you will discover that every step is deliberate and necessary for you to become the answer to the problems of this planet. With each chapter of her book, you will discover your role in this epic adventure called life and strengthen your resolve to please the Father while recognizing He is so much greater, powerful, wiser, and transcendent than you could ever imagine. Call the number on your screen now or visit terrymarministries.org to get your copy of this amazing book today. Now back to His Alone with Terry Marr. Welcome back. We've been talking about the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about how to allow ourselves to yield as the Holy Spirit begins to work on our character. How we have to have integrity. We've got to look like the Father, talk like the Father, know the words of the Father, know the thoughts of the Father. Jesus was our perfect example. He came not speaking of himself, he said, I speak the words of my Father, for I and the Father are one. And that's why the Holy Spirit is here. He is here to make us one with the Father. Just as the Father and Jesus are one, the Holy Spirit is one with them. We're to be one because in order for us to know the mind of the Father, we have to say the things that the Father has ordained for us to say and do things His way, not our way. As the Holy Spirit ministers to us, we're talking about being behind a curtain and feeling like uh, the Holy Spirit's pulling us out so that we can now become who God says we are. As this comes about, I like to think of it as the drawing of God. God draws us. And Jesus said when he was here that no man can come unto the Father except, no one can come to Jesus except the Father first draw him. So God is, drawing us as we turn towards Jesus, our perfect example, to be everything the Father has ordained for us to be. 
And as we are drawn towards Him, I mentioned last week regarding the hunger and the thirst that is deliberate. Something deliberate the Holy Spirit does to us. He allows drops of water and, and bits of bread to entice us. And as we run towards that, that food and that drink, like, like in a, a desert, a hungry man running towards food and water in a desert, that chase is deliberate. Because once we are in the midst of that chase, we can't get enough of him until we find ourselves at the feet, at the throne of our God. And all of that is where God wants us to be. He wants us to see Him so big that even though there are other gifts that are available to us, we will be so en engrossed in the fact that it's Him that we're seeking. We're looking at God. We're looking at the Father, the Creator of all the universe, of all things, eternal. We're so busy looking at Him, running towards Him, that all these other things that some men are seeking for, the ones who are chosen of God will be so into the face of God that it's not until we turn around that we see all these other things are added to us. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. When we get to the point that we're seeking Him instead of the add-ons, how many times have you seen people who just come to God or they get on their knees and they pray because they need material things? They're, somebody's going to come in and repossess the car or they're losing their house or they're losing their job or their family's in trouble or there's sickness in the house or sickness in the family and they want God to come and work a miracle of some sort. When in actuality, God is saying, are you just going to use me to take care of this and then walk away? We, waste, we may say, no, we'd never do that. We're not using you. But God knows our motives for calling him. Every time we call his name, God knows why we're calling. Remember the scripture we just mentioned, blessed is the man whom God chooses and causes to approach unto him. There are certain things that will cause us to approach unto God. And many times it's trouble that makes us run to seek God. But when the Holy Spirit is ready for us to become everything God has said we're to be, then it's not trouble that makes us fall on our knees. It's seeking the presence of God himself. When you have had a real experience with God, it won't be trouble or frustration that makes you run to Him. It'll be the love of God, the peace of the presence of God. It'll be God Himself, the God who created you and never left you, never walked away from you. That's what he wants. He wants your true love. And when you're ready to give him that true love, he's right there waiting, not only to receive it, but to give you his unconditional love. There's several things we mentioned a few weeks back when it comes to the chase of the Holy Spirit. It's a faith walk. We're dealing with our Father who we have not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things we can't see. When the Holy Spirit is drawing us, He's drawing us into territory that we have never been in before. We are going out of our comfort zone, seeking a God whom we have not seen, but we have sensed and we've felt and we've read about. But as the Holy Spirit is drawing us, the closer we get to Him, the more familiar we find God to be. God is our Father. Believe it or not, we knew Him before we knew anyone. 
He's the one who created us. He's the one who spoke us into existence. The Bible says man is not seeing God at any time. Yep, we see evidence of him. He's everywhere. And because of that evidence, the time comes in every true believer's life when he or she is ready to experience the God who they have sensed all the days of their life. For my husband and myself, it happened one day when we found out about a crusade in Chicago, Illinois. We had been seeking the face of God. We had been sensing the power of the Holy Ghost. But we had not been able to be around anyone who actually had seen miracles. I mean, true miracles happen. And because of that, we found out about this crusade and we said, no matter what it takes, we are going to go and we're going to just sit and find out what is happening in other parts of the country. Even, even though things weren't happening where we were living, there are things, just because it's not happening in your own backyard, please don't think it's not happening somewhere else. Because the presence of God is throughout the earth. That's why it's important to get out of your comfort zone and to go seeking. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Don't be afraid to go out of your comfort zone. Allow the Holy Spirit to take you where he needs you to go so you can see what the Father needs you to see so you can become who God says you are. This thing cannot be done in a vacuum. It has to be done where the power and the presence is available. So what we did, we went to Chicago, one of the coldest, probably coldest day in Chicago that we had ever experienced. We went there and when we got there, the place was crowded. I mean, there were people everywhere. We waited in the line for the longest time before we went in. For hours, we were out in the cold. But we had determined in our hearts we were not going anywhere until we got into that stadium and we had seen and heard and experienced what we had heard other people talking about. We refused to go home the same way we had come. We went looking for God. We had heard about the miracles. We had heard about the anointing. We had heard about how people were walking out of wheelchairs and speaking in, in other heavenly languages and uh, demons being cast out. We'd heard about all those things, but we didn't go for those things. We went to seek the God who's the creator of the universe, who had not only called us to do such a journey, but had chosen us to be part of that journey. We went to him. And when we got into that stadium, God deliberately surrounded us with people of like minds and like hearts, like spirits. It was there that all around us, miracles began to happen. We had a front row seat to the moving of the gifts. But all we could think about was what was happening inside of our spirit. For yes, the gifts were there, but more powerful than any of the gifts was the presence and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. It's the anointed people that break the yokes. That were seeking the gifts seeking the power of the Holy Ghost. It's the anointing, the presence that changes us forever. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things that so many people are running after. They're add-ons. 
They're part of the package deal. But even if you don't get what you think that you are supposed to get, look to the God who's the giver of that gift. Today we've been talking about the importance of knowing the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. But we've also talked about the importance of seeking God. Not so much the gifts. The gifts are an add-on. I'm sure many times you've done like I have. And you've gone and asked God for add-ons. Oh God, can you give me this and I need this and this is broken or I can't find this or I've run out of that. Those are all add-ons. The scripture says seeking the kingdom of God, seeking God's way of doing things, what God's plan is for our lives. Seeking God himself. As we're seeking him, as we're in his face, all these other things that we think we may need or that we're asking for. God says, once you're in my face, they're automatically there. They're all inclusive. Let's pray right now as we seek God and allow him to change our idea of who we think the Holy Spirit is and what he's to do in our lives. Yes, he's there to bring us presence and power, but he's also to draw us closer to God. So once we see the Father, we'll know that once we have him, we really don't need anything else. He is the giver of all things. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now. We are so glad we belong to you. We are so glad that we are your children. We're glad for this opportunity to speak your words to your people, to allow the Holy Spirit to come into our lives, to touch us, to use us, minister through us, to show us the way that you have already declared we must take to our expected end. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to use these sessions to prepare us as we go along the way that has been prepared for us by the Father. Talk to us. Help us. Show us. Show us the Father. Show us the Father and show us ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen.